This is a HeadGum Podcast. Monday, October 3rd, all new Jewish New Year, all new episode of If I Were You. Uh, it's Amir here. Uh, we had we had so much fun in Toronto. Jake is still back east. He's He, he enjoyed himself so much he never even came back to L.A. So uh, I'm recording these ads by myself. Never matter. That's good. That's what we like anyway. We're all on the same page. We're all in agreement of that. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Me Undies. I could talk about me undies by myself. I don't need Jake to, t- to to let you guys know. To help me to let you guys know that me undies is the most comfortable, stylish, affordable underwear that we own. Uh, you guys probably already know this already, but Jake and I exclusively already own uh, me undies entirely. Our entire uh, underwear wardrobe has been taken over. Uh, by this fabric modal, uh, which every pair of MeUndies is made from. It's this sustainably sourced fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. So it's incredibly comfortable. Uh, and if you go to MeUndies.com slash Jake or MeUndies.com slash Amir, you'll see how cool the designs are. And then in addition to that, shipping is free in the U.S. and Canada, and you can save $8 a pair with the MeUndies subscription plan. And I'm not done. And uh, you get 20% off your first order. Uh, if you do go to MeUndies.com slash Amir, let's just say my URL. Jake's not here. Jake can't stop me now. That's fine. Go to MeUndies.com slash Amir. That's right. MeUndies.com slash Amir. I'm a website of myself. You get 20% off your first order. Shipping is free in the U.S. and Canada. So all the people who came to the Toronto show, uh, you guys can get it uh, free shipping as well. Uh, check it out. They have not only underwear, but outerwear, men's, women's, shirts, hoodies, pants. Uh, it's all good. It's all cool. You guys hear us, hear us uh, raving about it. But you know how genuine the joy is for one of our favorite sponsors, MeUndies.com. Uh, all right. It's just me for the ad, but fortunately, uh, we can offset it because it was not only me and Jake for the show, but Grace Helbig, uh, one of our great, dear, hilarious friends is on the program today. We're dispensing wisdom. We're laughing. It's fine. <laughs> Where's Jake? He said he'd be back. He said he would pick me up, and I landed, and I stayed at a Panda Express for an hour and a half near the freaking airport, and he never came. <laughs> he never. Oh, he just texted me. Uh, he said he never, he never said he'd pick me up. I just... Yeah, that's true. I just really wanted Panda Express near the airport. All right. Uh, enough enough playing the blame game. Let's play the theme song. Uh, Toda for listening. Things got real. Shana Tova. Enjoy this episode. If you need a consultation and got hours to burn, then listen to If I Were You Show. And every situation where you don't know where to turn, just listen to If I Were You Show. They'll answer all your questions with stupid advice. They'll tell you just what they would do. And they'll preserve your dignity by keeping anonymity. So listen to if I were you. Listen to if I were you. Dang. Dang. Uh, what do you think of that, Grace? <laughs> That was so good. Thanks, so I people, made it. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> like, what were we saying? What were we saying? People make you guys original theme songs for every episode. Yeah, That's that right. guy seems like he just freestyled over like a Mario theme song. Yeah, or that sounded very like eight bit or whatever. Though. Well, funny you say that because this is the third time the Super Marcado Brothers have made theme songs for us, <gasps> and uh, they did it entirely on a NES Nintendo and then sang over it. That's really dope. That's good work. Cool. Cool. Good on you. And, and if we enjoy it, we could plug their website, which they say. But again, I would like to get some money out of them. So let's say we are willing to plug it. The podcast <laughs> is pretty popular. It would do really, really well for you guys. And if you could so, email the show at gmail.com with an God, invoice. They gave you a free song, a free intro. You don't feel like that is Sorry. It? If you can send us a, a how much money uh, you think you can afford. You're and a then, monster. <laughs> Uh, fine. It's supermarcatobros.com. That's supermarcatobros. How do you spell Marcato? M-A-R-C-A-T-O. Hmm. 
And then they're mm-hmm. coming to see us in October in Minneapolis. Hey! They can pay you then. Oh, that's exactly right. That way we don't even have to deal with the PayPal <laughs> oh, transaction yeah, fees. Yeah, it doesn't get lost so, in the Ethernet. Yeah, if you can... <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between Ethernet and Internet? It's just, you know, regionalisms. <laughs> Grace is crying right now. <laughs> I am. You invented the word regionalisms. <laughs> Uh, so thanks to the Super Mercado brothers. Uh, Grace, how are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I can't believe you've never been on our show before. You've never asked me before. Yeah. You're right. Well, that's what I can't believe. I can't, can't believe, believe it I never, we, a, we never yeah, asked her. Yeah, we never yeah. asked Because the first time we asked her, she, she came on. That's true. And if yeah. anything, there was once where we asked you not to come, remember? Yeah. yeah. And I still came. <laughs> we <laughs> wouldn't let you record. but <laughs> I watched and it was really sweet. Uh, we were just on your podcast. Yeah. Is that out yet? Nope. Okay. And I don't know exactly when. In the next like month or two months. Okay, or cool. So. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it is. <laughs> they they deleted it. They, they, <laughs> there was no recording device. We it was a it was a fine episode. Uh, uh, it was just a conversation uh, in the hallway that we had. <laughs> <laughs> you drunkenly oh. pitched her at a bar that you saw her at. Uh, your podcast is called Not Too Deep. Yes, that's correct. Uh, and you want to explain what it is? Sure, it's a podcast. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you guys are <laughs> on the podcast. internet or the internet? It's on the internet. Uh, it's also on the full screen app. You can watch it there, and then you can listen to it on iTunes and SoundCloud. Oh yeah, they videotaped ours. Yeah, so you they can did. even see us. We did our Matt Damon bit on that podcast, actually. You solid guys did bit. Saw so- lots of solid bits in that episode. Maybe the most bit heavy episode of Not Too Deep we've oh, ever shit. had. I wonder if that's going to be all right for the fans. <laughs> They'll love it. Much like that theme song, we did eight bits. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you God. so much for coming on our show. She's that is the end. out her drink. <laughs> uh, Grace has mixed a grapefruit LaCroix with uh, half and half, which I've never seen before. Actually, she yeah. dumped out the entire LaCroix. So uh, that's a can full of half, half and half. all cream. <laughs> with a, Straight with cream. a splash of vodka. Straight cream, yeah. homie. Yeah. I mean, try it. Very Have you ever had vodka juicy. and milk? Have you ever done that? That's like no. a white vodka Russian. and milk. Oh, yeah. Isn't that a white? No, what's in a white Russian? Rum? Uh, <laughs> Google it. Google Maybe. it. Just a little Google. Wait, uh, if you mixed vanilla vodka with milk, that might be not the worst thing in the world. I think so. Oh yeah, or yeah. vanilla almond milk, vanilla vodka, uh, 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 just a pump and a half of Hershey syrup. No, there's uh, actually there's a drink where you make you mix, it's soy milk and like vanilla vodka and like um. Uh, Frangelico or something, and it's really good. Frangelico. Yeah. Uh, Everything. When I was in high school, I mixed vodka with milk. You did? Because I thought, like, at that, I was so dumb about drinking that sure. I just, like, in my head, it was like vodka needed to be mixed with something, otherwise right. you would be dead. <laughs> And like then when I was in my twenties, I realized that you could just some people drink it on ice and you yeah. could have it yeah. straight. But milk and that was would have been first, so much better. Yeah, why, no, I just liquid? didn't have any. There was like oh. nothing except for because that was the first liquid you have. You're like, all right, so now let's try. It. It's like when you beat Mario, you a mama's play it again. Milk. Yeah, you had breast milk <laughs> vodka, then OJ vodka. Uh, a white Russian is a cocktail made with vodka, coffee liqueur, and cream. Vodka, coffee, liqueur, and cream. That sounds right. pretty great. Don't get me started on what coffee liqueur is because I don't know that either. <laughs> but that's okay. This isn't an alcohol podcast. It's an advice podcast. Did you know that this is the only advice podcast on the internet that Jake and I host? Um, I do know that now. How is that for one of a kind? <laughs> that is, I mean, what? How niche? No, no other show can ever claim that. That's so true. Uh, and do you make shirts that say that? Uh, no, but we should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> this is you... Dad Joke Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You've done Billy and Adam's No Joke Podcast? Yeah. This is Jake and Amir's Bad Joke Podcast. Oh, mm. so all the hits. I all think the hits. I'm trending towards a life where 50% of my jokes are bad jokes on purpose. I like that you're trending. Yeah, I'm heading that. there. I'm trying <laughs> to hit. You're ready to have kids. Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. If, mentally and physically, I'm there. Yeah, your maternal instincts are kicking in. That's, yeah. I'm lactating. <laughs> you're with child. <laughs> oh my god, you're pregnant. Uh, so people will email us at mm-hmm. if I read a show at gmail dot com. Jake and I will comb through literally. Tens of emails to find the best ten. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> you guys are doing the Lord's work. Yeah. Diligent. How many episodes have you done? Uh, two hundred something. Yeah, wow. two thirty something. That's a that's a lot of advice that's been given. Yeah, and some of it has even been good. Really? Yeah. Occasionally. Okay. Yeah. Do you legitimately try to give advice? 
I think so. I think <laughs> we, 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 we do uh, sometimes get a little silly. We do sometimes yeah, make like, fun of the emailer. <laughs> for sure. Just, That's going to happen. You shit on them a little bit. Just a tiny bit. Because <laughs> if you're It did confused... get to the point where people will sometimes remind us to answer the question oh, really? at the end of their email. <laughs> But, yeah, we try to help. Because if you're confused, you're a little bit dumb. And if mm-hmm. you're even a little bit dumb, we will find that thread and pull it until you feel so bad about yourself that you regret not only emailing yeah. the podcast, but listening to us most of the all. List, most of the questions we choose, they'll turn off the podcast before we get to the real yeah. to the help. Because yeah, we've shamed them. They're wow. nasty little angry boys. <laughs> Two role models in actually, this room. Actually, Ooh, role models. This, cool. I have an email right now from a nasty little angry boy, uh, <laughs> but we can't say his. But, wait, but not one that I can read on the podcast. Oh yeah, it is just. A <laughs> I went on a little... grinder date last night. <laughs> <laughs> grinder. <laughs> Uh, but we like to give these people fake names in order to preserve their anonymity. So, do you have a fake name we can call this guy? Um. Um, Magic Johnson. Okay, that's really fake. <laughs> yeah. Where did you even come up with that the fake first name? Time, did you guys ever do that thing where you check into hotel rooms under different names? No. no. The, oh, someone once asked me at a convention if I wanted to do that the first time ever, and I was like, yes, I do. And like, what name would you like to go by? And I just said, Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody more famous than you. Yeah, I Paparazzi like, there. I'm just so excited to be under a fake name. Yeah, I want people you to know that You can be anyone you want. I was like, Janet Jackson was the first thing that literally spit out of my mouth. And every time I ordered room service, they said, thank you, Miss Jackson. Oh, and wow. I was like, this is perfect. And I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Yeah. I I like, are you for real? real? Yeah. <laughs> you, we don't two, have Four cheeseburgers vodka. right yeah. now? Uh, room service is so pricey, but we won't get into that right now. Uh, <laughs> M- Magic well, Johnson good. writes. All right. Okay. My girlfriend of six months recently broke up with me. Uh, and there was one thing she said to me during a low point she was having. Uh, she basically said that she couldn't be with me in the long term because there were certain things about me on a fundamental level that she did not like. At the time, I didn't ask her to specify because I didn't want to get in an argument. But now I'm curious. I might want to change my personality. <laughs> Maybe there are those things that I need to know to keep more out in the open when meeting new people. Is this something that would benefit me if I knew? Would you guys want to know? Thanks. Love, Magic Johnson. Give it up for magic. Wow. Ooh, all of us, wow. not wow. quite. You're what? sort of just patting the tips of your fingers together. I'm doing like what an evil genius does when they have a plan. Yeah. <laughs> just, you're hatching. Uh, yeah. You're hatching yeah, this something. This is how I celebrate someone's plan. But that evil genius, <laughs> this evil, ge- uh, evil genius who puts his hands together as, as clunky as you're doing it, looks like their evil plan is really, really dumb. <laughs> an evil genius with not the greatest motor skills. Yeah. That's what's happening. Otherwise, he would have done something more admirable. Yeah. Yeah, he's sort of an annoyed he at his hand coordination. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when someone breaks up with you, do you want to know why? Ooh. How about that in the general sense? Bro, I already know why. Oh, you, uh, you it's always the same reason. Yeah. Which is? <laughs> uh, that I broke up with them. <laughs> <laughs> if someone ever rejected you. You've never been broken up with? No. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's an intimidating pattern. Have you ever wanted to go out with someone and they said no, like, before you got into the relationship? I've asked someone on a date and then they said yes, and then but then they texted me later and said that they didn't actually think we should go on a date. <laughs> Did they say why? Did you want to know why? Would you want to know why? Uh, no. I mean, it doesn't matter why, because the result's kind of the same. Well, that's the question. Does it, is it helpful to know why someone is saying no to you, hmm. in a general sense? Or do you like the blindness of a ghosting rejection? Just the blissful ignorance of yeah. not knowing all your faults? I think, in my brain, I don't want to know what everyone thinks about me, period. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... how dangerous would that be if you knew exactly could read people's minds what they were thinking right. about it's you? It's good that you exist on the internet. Yeah. I never know what people think about you. I can read. My own fans don't like me anymore. Uh, I don't need to know what strangers think. So if I can get the furthest away from that as possible is even people that are saying no to me, Mm -hmm. I still don't know why. I just assume, hey, we're not a good connection or a good match. You can assume anything, right? You can assume that you're ugly to them. Yeah. So (laughs) that's... I assume I'm ugly to you is how I end (laughs) Every <laughs> rejection I get. Uh, I'm actually hey, busy this going week. Uh, I'm busy. <laughs> oh, I'm ugly to you. <laughs> I get it. It's happened before. If I was hot to you, you wouldn't be busy to me. 
<laughs> That's the truth. I actually don't. I'm actually rejecting you because you talk like that. You fucking weirdo <laughs> robot man. I think that's the truth. I think that's the, that's the kernel of humanity and everything. But even someone that's attracted to you, attractive to you, that can change based on how well you get to know them. Suddenly, mm-hmm. like let's say I meet someone who's really attractive, but she's a mean and angry and bad person. Sure. At first, that's fine. I don't know about the mean and angry side. She's still going to be hot. She's bro. still hot. She's still hot. Yeah. But then after a while, the meanness catches up to the heat and suddenly it overpasses the heat. So she is she still ugly to me or is she still attractive? She's still hot. She's still hot. She's still hot. <laughs> I mean, there's so just some, like, think no about her. how sexy Hitler was. Oh, my God. And, like, he did power. some of the worst shit that you can do. Well, he did, like, but... some good stuff, but he did actually do some bad stuff, <laughs> Sorry, too. wait a second. No, I'm saying he did some bad stuff, <laughs> he too. He did. No, what you said first is that he did some good stuff. <laughs> I just mean his, like, art, his early shit, his fucking paintings and shit were, like, some of that was on point. But then, like, he did some pretty nasty shit. <laughs> He I, did don't the, wanna, uh, I don't even want to go down this path <laughs> yeah, anymore. I'm just vetoing I, started, in that conversation. I started the joke, <laughs> and I, I'm out. I, but, I tap out. And for that reason, I am out. <laughs> but for if you – would you rather not know if it's like a first ask and someone turns you down, but this is like six months later? Yeah, this is different. That's, yeah, that's true. Where this it's is, like I know you more as a person rather than just your appearance. <laughs> that's so. why it's even worse. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, don't get me wrong. I do think you're attractive. I was with you for half a year. Yeah. And yet still something is so fucked up in you that I'll say no more. I'm willing to have this bad conversation. And she said fundamentally (laughs) Unchangeably wrong. (laughs) Yeah, that I don't like fully understand. Absolutely unchangeable in you. I think that's that's like – that's in any relationship. You could like – if if they have fundamental differences, it Mm -hmm. might just be because he's uh, he's, um, – what's a good fundamental thing or a bad one to have? He, uh, he's he has a dry sense of humor. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, or something and she, something that yep. or no sense of humor. Yeah, or like he's low energy and she's high energy. Mm-hmm. So she like fun. I you know what we are not compatible. And right. you but can't that, change that about. Oh no, yeah, it doesn't mean that you should change <laughs> something moving forward. It just means that You're not somebody good. else might be a better match. Yeah. No, that's totally true. Did you ever take those Myers Briggs personality tests? Oh yeah, like introverted, extroverted. Yeah, I just I've recently become obsessed with them. So what are you? I'm an INFP. I'm a mediator, a healer. <laughs> yep, all of the things. That's what exactly why you need to be on this podcast. I know. Right? So you're introverted? Yeah, big time. But your your show and your online persona is so. Sure. Extroverted. This is what I learned. Introverted doesn't mean like uh, that you socially shut off. It just means that you don't gain energy by being around a big group of people. It takes energy from you. Like I have extroverted friends that are like they don't like being alone with themselves. When right. I love being alone. Like when do you feel oh. like you're charging? Do you feel like you're at a when you're at a party surrounded by people? That's you at your <clears> best, <throat> or do you feel like? I guess That's... it depends. If it's like a party of all my friends, I'm down. But right. if it's like, hey, I'm inviting you to a party and I get there early and I look around and it's strangers, I'm like, oh, no, this is bad. Does that mean I'm introverted or extroverted? I don't know. I, I bet people have like varying degrees of both in them. Like right. I like being in a small group of like my close friends. Like, yeah. That I enjoy. But if it's like I'm going to a convention all day, I'm like, uh, all I want to do is be alone in a hotel room by myself At ordering the the cheeseburgers as Janet Jackson. <laughs> so. Oh, here's a question I once asked my <laughs> friends. Would you rather throw a dart against America – Mm-hmm. A map. Sorry, throw a dart into the map of America, okay, so and you is... have to go to that city with any three friends you want for okay. a week, or somebody pays you an all-expense-paid trip to anywhere you want in the world, but you have to go by yourself. Map dart friends. Yeah. So like uh, rural Wichita, Kansas. Love it. Love it. Three friends in a shitty house. But you Love could it. aim for like Vancouver or something. Well, yeah. you c- it's Depends a map on of how America. You'd rather do that than like an all expense pay trip by yourself to like Japan or Iceland or somewhere exotic that you wouldn't necessarily ever go to. Totally map dart friends. Interesting. I think tiny towns in America are more interesting than like big, you know, tourist. But it can land on it can land on St. Louis. Great. I'll see that arch. <laughs> Show me that arch. What would you say? Uh solo dolo vacation. Solo dolo. I'd probably if if the two options, I, I might even rather go spend a week by myself in the tiny town in America, too. <laughs> I just fucking hate my three best friends. But you can bring anyone you want. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it sounds like a, I, could do, I, I could do the American one pretty easily. But I'm probably not ever going to like send myself to uh, the Faroe Islands. Right. And I think I'm more like you. I'd rather be in the middle of nowhere with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like, that sounds exciting to me. I've never traveled alone. Have you? Yeah, a lot. 
Cool. Yeah, it's fine. It's cool. It's fun. It's I love tra- traveling alone. The best. Yeah, I like going by myself on an airplane. Oh, yeah, that yeah. Is <laughs> like a real great. adult, all by myself. Wow. <laughs> and I get to wear a bib, and then mommy <laughs> picks me up at the gate. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I get a pin with the pilot's wings. <laughs> Uh, back to this guy's original question. What, yeah. Is this something that would benefit me if I knew? Oh, oh, that's so hard. I don't know. I mean, but I don't think, like you were saying, he shouldn't change his personality necessarily. Yeah. Unless, I think constructive criticism is always helpful. <laughs> you don't but. get that from your ex, though. Yeah. Like, I, I, there's no world that I want to like, know what all my exes think of me. That's, but see, I think that's course. where guys you, and girls are different. Cause girls you do? Want to know? I, after a period of time, like... After, like, let the dust settle, and then I'll probably yeah. be like, hey, by the way, what's wrong with me? What's that called in, like, the business world? Like, a post-mortem? Like, all right, <laughs> the festival is over. Now let's meet for a week and discuss yeah. what we did you right really, or wrong. You, you think that you don't know, like, why No, you... I assume. I mean, it's more of a conversation. I, I think I'm decently self-aware, and so I would know, like, where the problems lie. But if there was something from that person because i mean especially long-term relationships right you respect that person enough that you're like at one point i thought you were the greatest person of all time i chose you above all else right and so it's like i respect your opinions about me but i don't want them to come from like a place of just pure like pain hurt like you know for for the sake of just hurting me because that person's hurting because then i don't trust what they actually say that's true i like the idea of like a year or two later yeah having clear eyes full hearts i feel like they they have good insight on like you know your professional life or something but not like how you are as a someone in a relationship if Uh, i've met they would know the most they did it they experienced you the ride no but like you the ride (laughs) changes you're not the same person i'm not the same guy as i was when i was 27 when i was dating somebody yeah, but maybe there are things about you that you could perhaps tweak accordingly. Of course there are. I was a, I was a, a <laughs> despicable monster. I already know, though. Despicable you. Uh, so would you say find out or not find out? Don't find out. You're good. <laughs> Grace, final answer? Uh, it's, I don't, I'm, I'm kind of torn between the two. It depends. I mean, I don't think you can, if you find out, Everything has to be taken with a grain of salt, right? Right. And you can't actually be like, okay, You're that's biased. exactly what I'm going to change. Yeah. You uh, didn't hire a consultant. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, you need to hire a matchmaker, <laughs> a Tony Robbins, all of them. But it didn't, like, it didn't work. So like, what would he want to change? He would want to change something so he could go off but and I have mean, a relationship with somebody that was exactly like his ex-girlfriend? But it wouldn't necessarily be changing. If someone that you broke up with said to you, there's something fundamentally wrong with you, you'd be like, cool, bye. I and then you'd like never there's something wanna... fundamentally wrong with you. <laughs> You're staring in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid motherfucker. Change. I would just want to know. Not necessarily, you know, take that as the Do you only... think you know what someone would say? What your fundamental flaw is? <laughs> yeah, probably. You don't have to say it out loud, but would I you say it out loud? Communicating. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't understand what you were saying. Oh, I'm good. I'll just keep it inside. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. And do you know what they would say about you? Um, whatever it is to be like, um, <laughs> <laughs> what's the one where like, you don't kiss on <laughs> like, uh, where you're just like empty on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It's don't like, know so, words. It's is like so, uh, sociopathic or something. Yeah. Some version of like, I oh, could, I could like fuck somebody else and then come back and like nothing will have changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, like, yeah. And like, we'll have like a two hour long <laughs> crying breakup talk. And then like, I leave the house and forgot that it happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you and, like, you just want just, a like, panini. I'll just go to Starbucks and get a croissant and be like listening to Blink-182. And, like, oh. You just love Blink-182. It's all right. Tell me what you think. <laughs> What's yours? Uh, mine wouldn't be anything. I'm perfect. All right. Oh. This next Jesus, question that might be comes one, from... <laughs> uh, no, I think mine would be empathy, sympathy. Like when someone oh. feels bad or is sad, I'm unable to be like, I really feel bad for you. Can't you can't relate? Like, uh, compassion? Yeah. Just lack of compassion. Monster? Yeah. Got pure it. monster. <laughs> pure monster. What would you rather have? Somebody that was uh, not compassionate and mm-hmm. couldn't empathize or somebody that was like... <laughs> Borderline could do it and then turn it off. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> no, you because did. you have to marry either me or Jake by the end of this. The show. door is locked, <laughs> and there, he, this guy in the corner, is ordained. <laughs> Would you rather have the honest truth or the dishonest Ruth? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruth. I'm Ruth Bader Truthsburg. 
Uh, oh, those are two tough ones. Yeah, they're but... both they're both equally great. Is the problem? I understand. Where you're coming from. <laughs> Good to know about yourself. Uh, here's a more lighthearted one. Okay, not from Magic Johnson, but rather from another guy named. Oh, um, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> no, so no, you no, only Stedman. know black billionaires. <laughs> Stedman Winfrey. Stedman. Oh, she, he took her name? Yeah, of course. Well, that's awesome. Amazing. Stedman writes, 20-year-old dude from Australia here. Uh, I was hanging with my friends, and there was a new guy in the crew, and his laugh was really similar to mine. And everybody wouldn't stop talking about how much they hated it. I thought his laugh was rather contagious, but everybody else had other thoughts. Is there any way to change your laugh? What would you recommend? Wow. Wow. That's a layered question. <laughs> it's funny. Looking, he's, look, he's looking for a new laugh. This we guy, can give him laugh suggestions. But that's is, really good. I mean, do you think you guys can pick out your own laugh? Like, do you know the sound of your own laugh? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I do like one really loud. <laughs> like that. Yeah, you can. Well, Amir really. I think it's, sometimes it's not even a ha ha ha. It's just like a ha. Yeah, oh, one loud viral. thrust. Okay. Right when you get his laugh, it feels good. Yeah, <laughs> and sometimes I do it like a little Japanese schoolgirl. So I'm like, <laughs> it's like a pre wipeout thing. Yeah, a little, and I sort of cover my mouth because it's great disrespect to see my tongue. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is great that. dishonor. <laughs> do you like your laugh? Um, I do as an adult now. I think somehow, I, like, my dad always had a great laugh growing up, and I think somehow, like, that influenced how I laugh. I never knew that I had, like, quote, a decent laugh until uh, I moved to New York and started doing comedy oh. and, like, would sit in the audience, and all my friends at the theater would be like, we love when you sit in the audience because you laugh really loud and it's so distinctive. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I never knew that until someone told me. And now Having I'm... a good laugh is, a, is it's just a great thing. Well, laughing I wish is I the best one. feeling in the world. It feels so good. That right, it's and it's such my... a weird thing. Yeah. Do animals laugh? They... Hyenas. <laughs> yeah, they're hilarious. <laughs> but I can. I don't, could you? Could you change your laugh? Well, that's a good like question. A, could you have a surgery? Or you get your laugh? I think changed? you can change on it. I think you can work on it and change it. Mm-hmm. I remember changing my smile as a youth. <laughs> changing <laughs> really? your smile. That's your laugh. Yeah, that is my laugh. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Like, I used to smile naturally, like just upper teeth and gums, and I thought it looked weird. <laughs> yeah. So I like opened my mouth wider, not unlike Magic Johnson. Uh huh. Oh yeah, that looks happy. <laughs> that, yeah. I think we should go back. <laughs> yeah, I, the first one's a little like less gummy. offensive or like aggressive. This oh, it's one? more gummy. Yeah, that's for sure. They're all Asian somehow. <laughs> you have the Asian schoolgirl laugh. It's because Israel's technically in Asia. Wow, well, interesting. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You change laughs like you change your handwriting. Oh, yeah. You could do that, too. I changed my signature once. Did you? I changed my signature recently. Really? Whoa. A little inconvenient. A couple of my checks bounced because <laughs> really? yeah, the signature didn't match. Whoa. Why did you change your signature? Because um, I was... I don't know. I just thought my my signature was like ugly, and I was like, I can make it look cooler. I haven't changed it since I was like seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Did so you I just like practice? I, I worked on it for yeah. an hour. You practiced and made a signature. Yeah, I practiced penmanship when I was in like fourth and fifth grade. I remember all of my friends we were all trying to figure out what our penmanship looked like, and at one point I did like the flat letters on the <gasps> bottom. Yeah, but it took me like twice as long to write. Did you have really good? Girl, fourth grade girl handwriting? No, I wanted, I have, my handwriting's, you know, just so average. It's uh, classic. Yeah, classic. I don't like talking about it. (laughs) (laughs) I only like talking about things that I excel in. That I'm amazing at, that I'm special. Slightly above average (laughs) by lying. That's the last line of your resume. Mm -hmm. Um, Special skills, sometimes above average. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes above average penmanship. Uh, Is there any way to change your laugh? You're saying yes. Yeah, I think you. I think you start laughing from the belly. I think like a nice. <laughs> oh, I hate like a that. Santa impersonator. Uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to suggest this guy does a, a nice belly laugh. Okay. Uh, and I think it's a natural thing that uh, is in your DNA, and you can't objectively, genuinely change. You can change your fake laugh, but I don't think you can change your real laugh. And you don't want to, because then you're re- like you're paying more attention to how you're laughing in situations than like what's funny in the situation. It's true. Yeah. Like, you're yeah. asking, laughing is you're like an animal noise should. that we make. Yeah. Like, we, Guttural. Yeah, you can't really control it. Yeah, it's like a sneeze. You can't change the way you sneeze. Wow, that's a really good... <laughs> I've actually worked on my sneeze. <laughs> I've held it in versus letting it blow, but like, you know, like there are some people that are like, yeah, like yeah. That. I can't, I can't do that naturally. I can't do that. <laughs> Grace loves it. <laughs> it's 
This is so funny. Here's what if there was a uh, tickling but for sneezes instead of laughs? So I sort of uh, tickle you and you start sneezing. <laughs> Here, let's give it a shot. <laughs> Crawling over the mic. <laughs> Get off of me. That would make life different. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. So there's some I've I've met people that can like make themselves sneeze. Really? Yeah. People can make themselves burp. I've never seen people make themselves sneeze though. That's Jake um, claims that he can't burp. You I, can't? Yeah, I can't burp. Why? Let's talk about it. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I wish I knew. It's I, not like, a why, it's more a how. It seems like it's a natural the gas either goes up or floats down to your asshole. Right. Well, some, <laughs> sometimes I I won't like burp. I, I don't I can't like make a belch, mm-hmm. but sometimes if I like really need to, it'll like escape my mouth and really like <laughs> oh, go, silent like, but burpy. Be like like a <sighs> Like something okay. like that will come, but that even sounds more like a burp than it is. It's mostly yeah. like the carbonation leaving your ears more than anything. Like a uh, cartoon when just steam coming but, out of yeah, your ears. Yeah, when he well, gets sometimes mad, at, steams sometimes out at of a bar, <laughs> like if I've had like two beers or something, yeah, yeah. I really need to burp. That's awesome, by the way. When I have like two beers, <laughs> that's really cool. Really? Uh, yeah, when you go to a bar and you have two beers. Yeah, that's oh, really cool. That's Actually, nice. this usually happens only having one beer. But anyway, <laughs> still, <laughs> uh, yeah, any beer at a bar. <laughs> Thanks, dude. That's wow. really cool. Like again, I'll go to the bathroom and just pull the trigger. What does that mean? Not even like not not puke. If I just like hit my gag reflex, I will make like a fucking screaming loud burp sound, <laughs> like a Homer Simpson like burp. A, ah! Oh, <laughs> and like that's my burp for the day. But you have to go do it in private. Well, because if, if I'm just I, I've yeah, because I, I have to stick my finger down my throat to hit my gag reflex. You can do that in public. I'm sure people wouldn't judge you that. Uh, no, I don't yeah. think anyone. No, would it, think well, it's it was too loud on a date. I'm thinking you could just sort of reach down there, wrist yeah. deep, and go. Bleh. You want them to see all of you. <laughs> That's true. And <laughs> That's... hear and smell all of you. So there's something fundamental about you that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. It's the way you burp. It's the burping thing. It's when you tickle your uvula in public <laughs> and uh, scream belch uh, out of your eyes and ears. Uh, I, had, I, had a, I had a Jake burp almost come up, but never mind. That's awesome. Oh, okay. If you want, we can take these microphones into the bathroom. Well, yep. no, I wouldn't be able to do the the finger gag burp. We shouldn't talk about this anymore. It's not, it's not it's very, important. It's not, be, it's not becoming. Yeah, it's okay. unbecoming of you. Uh, Disgusting. Let's take a little quick break and then come back with more grace and more questions and more answers Woo-hoo. after this. This episode is also brought to you by Squarespace. Nothing can stop me. I'm doing ads alone, which is fine. Uh, you guys know Squarespace uh, because they're great at what they do, which is helping you build a professional-looking website. Have you ever thought to yourself, or if somebody's ever come to you and said, you know, I have a great idea for a store or a personal website or a professional blog, uh, and you just didn't know how to create the website itself? Well, now you can using squarespace.com. It's so easy to use. You can create a, a website very simply and intuitively. There's free custom domains. That means they'll throw in the domain that it takes to build a website if you sign up for a year. Uh, you'll get beautiful templates, seamless commerce tools, customer support. Guys, millions of people already use Squarespace, so you know, you know it's good. Uh, you just need to use them next time you ever find yourself in a situation where you want to create something online, which is a fun little thing to do. Um, I mentioned free custom domains earlier. That's right. Squarespace makes adding a domain to your site simple if you sign up for a year. I know what you're thinking. All the good domain names are taken. Worry not. Jake and I, if he were here, would help you uh, every time Squarespace endorses an episode. We give you, we give you free available dot com URLs. Uh, Jake's not here right now, so I will I will say uh, my two URLs. They're kind of related. Um, my first one is 100grapes.com, 100grapes.com. Move over, onealmond.com. There's a new perfect amount of things out there, and it's 100grapes.com. And my second URL, since Jake's not here, I'll throw in a second one for free, cheesings.com. Mm. Almost sounds like a word, doesn't it? Cheesings.com, C-H-E-E-S-I-N-G-S. Uh, cheesing is probably a word, and that, this is just the multiple of that. Cheesings.com, 100grapes.com, all available for you, uh, whether you want to buy that or a different uh, URL. Please go to squarespace.com and enter offer code if I were you to get 10% off your first purchase. Uh, if you want to just try, guys, start a free trial at Squarespace. Go to squarespace.com. And enter our offer code, that's if I were you, to get 10% off your first purchase. The prices are already low, so 10% off is a huge help. Squarespace, set your website apart. Uh, I know I am ready to get back to Grace. 
And I know you're ready to get back to grace. So why don't we do that starting now? And we're back. All right. <laughs> How are you, Grace, in general? In general, still doing well. Uh, we're you? recording this in the smack dab middle of September. Would right. you, how's your September going so far? Really good. We're doing lots of Dirty 30 promotion. Well, yeah. why don't we get to another question? Uh, so cool. basically... Thanks. Dude. Appreciate it. Uh, well, what does Dirty 30 promotion mean? It's a movie, Dirty 30, mm. that myself and Hannah Hart and Mamie Hart have coming out on September 23rd. What did you do for it? We went into a bunch of rooms and okay. talked in front of cameras to <laughs> oh. people about huh. spoofs and goofs. And did you write the movie? Did you just act in it? Did you direct it? Uh, Mamie Mamrie and I wrote the story, Mamrie wrote the script, and she and Hannah and I are in it, along with a bunch of other content creators and comedians. Adam Lustig, who has a podcast with you guys, oh, is in the movie, and he's Adam. amazing. How was shooting the movie? When did that happen? That happened last November, and it was really fun. We found this house, this giant like party house in Eagle Rock that we shot in every day, and so it oh, really man. did feel like a party. Wow. That's so dope. Yeah. Eagle Rock, too? That's Eagle Rock! Were you involved in the editing of the movie? Uh, no, I did ADR one day. And that's it? And that was it. Other than that, that it's great. like, just show me the final cut. Uh, yeah, they showed us the final cut, then we gave notes, and then they showed us the final, final cut. And Hell it was yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's fun. I think we're going to see it. I hope so. Are you guys coming? We yes. got the invite, and I RSVP'd yes. Wow. Okay. Is cool. that tonight or next week? Next week. Next week. It's yeah, yeah. the 20th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. When will this come out? Uh, don't know yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, People can still go get the movie at dirty30movie.com. Or oh, you iTunes. can download it? Yeah, it's direct download, and it's playing in some select theaters, and... Uh, across the country and then in like two theaters one in new york and one in la it's just like playing as a movie really yeah it's crazy we just found that out where Uh, when uh no idea (gasps) no idea find it yourself i know dirty 30 movie.com yay 30 as the number 30 is the number do you want to say what the movie's about sure it's like can't hardly wait before a 30 year old that's having a shitty time in life and lets her friends throw her like a big house party for her birthday oh yeah. the, who's the, the person having a shitty time in their life Mamrie Hart <laughs> alright <laughs> I throw the party yes dude also my character's in a loveless marriage oh really yeah it's really fun there's oh. lots of storylines it's uh it's it's cool it's like a house party film yeah uh do you remember turning 30 yes it was last September was it a big deal I went to Greece for my birthday. (laughs) Much less exciting than the Dirty 30 plot. (laughs) Yeah, I know. Mamrie, it's kind of based loosely on like Mamrie's life. She turned 30 a couple years ago and a bunch of her friends at that time, she realized, were like freaking out about turning 30. Yeah, it's a big one, right? Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It didn't feel that crazy to me and she didn't think it was that crazy to her she threw a weapons party for her 30th birthday that's Whoa. cool yeah. what does that mean she uh used her friend's warehouse out here in los angeles and she dressed in a gi a karate gi <laughs> and she had blow darts and a pellet gun and uh throw chinese throwing stars and one handgun and, <laughs> yeah, and a fucking one gun handgun <laughs> one ar-15 yeah we all like i trust you guys yeah anybody can lift this up and <laughs> shoot it all jesus but I want Why? you guys not to. Yeah, in hindsight, not the best idea for a party right. with alcohol. It's so involved, dangerous. Alcohol was, and firearms party. But we're all we were very responsible, <laughs> and we we uh, she made a bunch of trophies and like wrestling belts for everyone who won because there was all these different like levels. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really really cool. And like our friend's mom came and was just like shooting the blow dart. It wow. Was great. Yeah, it was really cool. I wish my friend's mom was at my thirtieth birthday party. What'd you didn't you invite my mother. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, that was fast. She wanted to come. <laughs> Sounds like you've been sitting on that complaint for. A we while. all went to Vegas. It was for Amir's thirtieth birthday. Oh, really? Yeah. Me, a bunch of friends, Amir, not my mother. Of course, not your she mother. She was unceremoniously, <laughs> unceremoniously uninvited. <laughs> Jake home. invited her, and I had to call her and tell her not to board. She the had flight. a plane ticket. Uh, well, it was tell her to get off of her flight because she wasn't allowed. Yeah. She was like, well, can I just go to go to Las Vegas and not hang out with you? And Amir said, no. <laughs> we'll run into you and it'll uh, sour my mood. Yeah, she knows what she did. As a 30-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> was it fun? Was Vegas fun? Yeah, 30 was fun. I, I, was, I was excited about 30. I think of 30 as like almost like a fresh start because I felt like, oh, I was getting older in my late 20s, 27, 28, 29. Mm-hmm. And that's 30. It's like, oh, I'm at the beginning of a new decade. Sure. So it didn't feel like, oh my God, I'm getting old. It just felt like, okay, we're restarting. Yeah. 30s are the new 20s, says people. Yeah. yeah. And then when you turn 40, that'll be the new 22. That'll be the new 
16. Who knows? <laughs> we don't care. I don't know. I forget that I'm 30. Everyone says that except like 16 year olds. <laughs> yeah. Like, like hey, 30 still that. 30. <laughs> you old loser. <laughs> now you can't hang somewhere. out at this warehouse party. <laughs> <laughs> Give us our pellet guns. <laughs> Do you feel any older? Like when you hang no. out with 18 year olds or see teenagers? Mm, yeah, when I see teenagers, I feel like physically older, but in my brain, I still feel like I'm 22. Yeah. I forget that I'm 30 until someone asks how old I am. <laughs> and you say 20 at uh, 30. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, we need to see your ID. You can't buy these 40s. <laughs> it's great. You can't buy these 40s unless you're 30. Right back to you guys after another break. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll stick around here. Uh, do you have time to answer a few more questions? Of course. Heck yeah. It's just a quick five minute song. Yeah. I know all the words so far. Oh, that's great. You could sing along with him if you don't mind. I'm done. All right. Do you have another rich black person's name? Morgan Freeman. That's true. This classic. Morgan Freeman writes I have found myself in a problem. Me and my girlfriend of nine months have recently moved to college. We are at different colleges that are about 30 minutes away from each other. The problem lies in the fact that she's a very jealous person. She will never get me, uh, she will never let me go out to parties or clubs because she's worried I will cheat on her, which makes my social life rather dull. The problem gets even worse because recently I've become friends with a girl in my class. My girlfriend would hate this, but I don't want to lie to her. Me and this girl talk and joke quite a lot and get on quite well. <laughs> so this has made my experience of moving to college much more comfortable. Should I tell my girlfriend? And if she takes it badly, what do I do? I feel this new girl is really special and I kind of like her. Thanks for all your help. Love, Morgan Freeman. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Your girlfriend is going to be so pissed at you when you dump her for this new girl. I know, for this new love She's of your gonna life. She's going to be so upset and wonder what she did wrong. What was her fundamental problem? What is your yeah. girlfriend so jealous of? I'm just falling in love with someone else. <laughs> that makes me feel whole. God. Oh, you should have forbid me to go to class. <laughs> or to college in general. Yeah, maybe if wow. I had gone to the club, it would have gotten something out of my system. <laughs> I like the idea of forbidding people. Have you ever been forbidden to do something or made a rule that forbade others? In a relationship? Yeah. Now that I can remember off the top of my head. You that's... better not do this or you don't let, do not do that. I guess like, don't cheat on me. Oh, that's a hard and <laughs> fast rule. <laughs> I feel like that one's always sort of established at the top. Yeah. I mean, but it's when it's not said out loud, then it's like... Up for interpretation. Right. You never said <laughs> been not heartbroken. to. <laughs> yes, I did. The first date, I went over ground rules. I said no cheating, and you said I... fine. I thought uh... you said generally, not on you. <laughs> yeah, I think even on tests, like when you <laughs> take as couples. Jesus. Uh, yeah, that situation sounds like it sucks. Uh, yeah, but luckily there's a pretty simple answer, which is you don't have to deal with your angry girlfriend, and if she takes it badly, you don't have to do anything. Yeah, right. also, why is she so jealous? Does that come from, like, a moment in your relationship or from her in a previous relationship? Can yeah, it's usually... a lot of young couples are – it happens to everybody. But doesn't mm -hmm. it seem like jealousy is, like, much more prevalent in young couples and then some people grow out of it and some people don't? Yeah, do you get yeah. more jealous or do you only get less or the same? I was definitely – like, I was fucking – I was jealous out of my mind when I was, like, 18. Yeah, when I was, like, yeah. When I was going into college, too. But now I'm, I don't do it. I don't get jealous. It's your right to be hellish. <laughs> <laughs> I still get jealous. Maybe she thinks it's her right to be hellish. Yeah. But also, like, I, that's probably it, definitely. <laughs> so what are you going to say or add to this conversation <laughs> no, after I clearly have nailed it? I mean, nothing other than, well, I get, what's the next problem that you need to <laughs> well, solve? Well, this girl – that she's, he's saying she's like jealous and it's annoying, but like at the same time, he's doing something that would make her jealous, i.e., starting a relationship with somebody else. Right. Her fears are coming true. Her jealousy is not unfounded. But did she manifest them because she was so strict that it made someone act out? Oh, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, the secret. Maybe if this girlfriend was so great, he wouldn't even think that other girl was that great because he'd be like, oh, my girlfriend's better than when this girl. This is why we always tell people when they're going to college to be single. 
Well, that's the thing, too, is that I feel like a lot of young relationships, you get jealous because you kind of know that this isn't going to be it forever. Yeah. But sometimes you hear about, oh, I dated my high school sweetheart, and now we're in love, and now we're going to have Doesn't a kid. Tough, we had a kid, and now I think I'm going to have another kid. See, when yep. I hear that, though, I'm like, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. it's very depressing to me. That doesn't sound like a beautiful love story. I'd yeah. be like, oh, you're just both afraid, I guess. Because um, you didn't get to have sex with a lot of people or because you didn't get to be in relationships with a lot of people or because yeah. you only you went to an ice cream store once and then never went back? All of the above. Especially the ice cream <laughs> store one. Where did you go to college? I went to a small liberal arts college in northern New Jersey called hmm. Ramapo. Called Princeton. <laughs> yes. We had a, we had a uh, show at Ramapo. Yeah, we did you have did? a show at Ramapo. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's it's, <laughs> it's Ramapo, it's Ramapo, baby. It's not the best. Did you have a worst. high school sweetheart? Did you have a college sweetheart? Did you have a I neither? had a college sweetheart uh, that we I dated for like two and a half, um, three years. That's a lot. That's almost all of college right there. Well, I dated like the two years that, uh, that I was a junior and senior. Oh, hell yeah. College yeah. boy. College junior boy. in high school. Do you know my dude? He goes to fucking Ramapo. Did he go to Ramapo? Oh, no, no. I, I, no, he <laughs> did Do you think that she is dating a senior in Rampo right now? No, I think that she was a junior or senior in high school dating a college. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I dated him my junior and senior year of college, and he was a year below me. I met him at Ramapo, and then he transferred to Rutgers. Mm. Yeah, so. Rutgers, Ramapo. Rivalry. That's like the Romo, Romeo and Juliet. Monty right? Capulet, oh, for man, real. Oh, the Jersey Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> Which uh, is another movie you're working on. That, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, Jersey you, Juliet. <laughs> Jer- Jersey Juliet. Not bad. Great reality show. I mean, <laughs> let's sell it to E immediately. Or Rose by any other name. <laughs> That's really good. Really? You can be not Romeo, but who's Romeo's ugly Mercutio. friend? Tybalt. <laughs> <laughs> uglier. Way Mercutio uglier. then. Grace had it. <laughs> they, oh yeah. Um, how about you? Did you have college sweetheart? I had a college sweetheart. I had a post college sweetheart, and then I had a post post college sweetheart. Wow! Look at all these sweethearts. Three sweethearts for the price of one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, how did that go after college? Uh, you know, it's funny. I started the college sweetheartness right as high school was ending, and mm-hmm. then I started the post college one right as the college was ending. So, so I you always dated like, someone completely through college. Uh, not completely through, but maybe for the first like two or three years. Gotcha. Wow, then, that's a long ass time. That's yeah. the whole time you were in college. Yeah, for yeah, Damn. not the whole time. Do you regret it? No, I, I mean I don't regret anything, but it <laughs> is fun. I didn't have the like I didn't I wasn't so like confident and uh, cool in college that I felt like I was missing out on like hooking up with other ladies. Sure, sure, sure. So I was like, oh, I'm happy to have this uh, girlfriend that I like mm-hmm. for my freshman and sophomore year. That's nice. I was just a, a stringy, greasy little Jewish teenager. I mean, I was <laughs> I was twelve in college, so that's <laughs> one of the things. <laughs> I took my PSATs at age nine. Oh wow! Failed them. <laughs> <laughs> I got a four on them. <laughs> I got a fucking eight. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that I even took them, I guess, was impressive enough <laughs> to get me admitted. You showed up. I went to some sort of University of Judaism, which is hardly a school. It's just like where my mom takes mahjong classes. <laughs> <laughs> she takes classes for the game so, Mahjong? That's correct. You yeah. have to learn how to play Mahjong. So oh. it was hard to find a girlfriend there, I guess. So yeah. you, you sort of stuck it out with the one of your mom's friends who was down yeah. to yeah. date you. She was 59 and I was 12. Or, wow. yeah, 58 and I was 12. That's beautiful. <laughs> but when I turned 14, she was still 58. <laughs> no, so. she wasn't. She was a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> What do I do, says this guy? Just break up with your girlfriend? It's yeah. okay yeah. to break up with her? It sounds like your girlfriend isn't that great. Sounds like she's not that great. Yeah. And if, if you're a jealous person out there, maybe don't be jealous. Or else, or maybe you're... there's a reason to be... The, I, Wait, I we don't on... know this guy. Uh, he could be like sugarcoating his situation. Yeah, I keep on rejecting like the jealous idea because he is uh, he is bound to cheat on her right now. Yeah. Like, is, there, is jealousy wrong if it's uh, f- founded... Well founded. No. Yeah. Are you are you jealous if somebody cheats on you, or are you just uh, appropriately angry? Yeah. Is, is, it, is that is jealousy, jealousy still? <laughs> I don't know. Sixty-four thousand dollar question. Either way, though, it, it, I, I I will. I, I agree that it sounds like they shouldn't be in a relationship. So also, that's easy. like she should figure out where the core of her jealousy thing lies because that sucks to continue with. <gasps> yeah, that's yeah. true. You got to work on your jealousy, everybody gonna, out there. She's gonna bring that baggage into everything. Mm-hmm. Should I snap? <laughs> Nice. Wow. Oh, wow. shit. Oh, my God. Your thumbnail, just, <laughs> it landed on my cheek. 
<laughs> now That's... it's crawling, not unlike uh, Fantasia, towards my eye. <laughs> Fantasia. <laughs> do, 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 Sorry. That was Fantasia. I stopped was caring about life for a little... Let's say a second and a half. Oh, okay. I didn't know if I was alive or dead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just humming a Fantasia. And the sad part is I didn't the, care. You blacked out to the, your own sounds of Fantasia. Yeah. Wow, that's an impressive skill. Really cool. When I say Fantasia, what do you imagine moving? Fantasia Burino. Okay. So you didn't answer my Pop question. Icon. Jake. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have time for one more question? Yeah. One more question from... Fantasia Burino. I like that. Very nice. Fantasia Burino. She's the American Idol winner season something. Hell yeah, dude. She's in the color purple. She is. The movie or the color? The Broadway. Oh, the show. Mm Mm-hmm. I think so. Fact check. (laughs) Fact check. Let's just have a... Podcasts rarely have just eight seconds of silence. Should we do it? It's kind of interesting. It's good room tone. Yeah, Yeah. room tone. All right, let's do eight seconds of silence. So for anybody listening at home, this is just seconds of silence. Your phone isn't broken. It didn't. It it didn't (laughs) skip. If you're driving, you're at the gym, you're doing a chore. Just enjoy this. You feel like you lost service for a second. It's not buffering. No, this is just eight seconds, full silence. Don't worry, we're gonna come back at the end. When I eight seconds, hold on. I'm gonna let me finish talking. (laughs) We do want to get to it as as quickly as possible. Like it'll sound like one Mississippi, two Two Mississippi, right? But for eight seconds. Okay. Well, the question is three Mississippi. Well, I have a question for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) When I edit this, should I drop all the levels down so it's actual silence, or do you like still hearing the the faint room tone? Ooh, I I like hearing the the silence that we hear. Okay, so it will be room silence. That being said, it's gonna be five Mississippi. But let's six West. Mississippi. Yeah. And seven then obviously we know what's next, which right. is seven Mississippi. And then finally, do I say eight Mississippi or is that, does that bring us to the ninth second? Eight That's nine seconds. You can't say Mississippi after eight. Eight is the end of it? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Isn't that seven and a half? start with zero Mississippi? Actually, Actually we should move time. on to the question. Oh, yeah. We don't have time for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the it. Guy, the viewers missed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Eight seconds of silence? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Mm-hmm. Starting in three, two, <clears> one. That was awesome, guys. Yeah. I hated it. <laughs> Neither of you guys would look at me. I, w- I wanted to make eye contact. Oh, with have somebody. you ever done that? Um, the four minutes of uninterrupted eye contact is supposed to like increase your levels of intimacy with someone to like tenth degree. Yeah. Wow, really? Yeah, there's a whole buzz staring movie. at each other. Yeah, there's a movie YouTube video that BuzzFeed did about it. And have you it's done like, it? No, I hate it. I don't want to do it. I hate intimacy. <laughs> Hannah loves it. Wants to do it with everyone she knows. Have you done it with her? No. I reject it every time. <laughs> Four full minutes. That's such Four a long minutes. time. Four minutes. And like, these couples, it's all different couples of varying like relationship lengths. Like yeah. there's strangers, there's people that have been together like six months, 10 years, 50 years. And people just start crying in the middle of <gasps> it. Totally silent. I yeah. couldn't take, I think that's one of my things. I can't take things seriously. I wouldn't be able to oh, do man. that. Oh, and yeah, I, I'm the opposite. Too. I want, I, I'm more like Hannah, I think. I want to do it so badly <laughs> you, you guys like, should do it i instantly love it i'm like fuck it if it makes me feel something if it lights a fire in my heart <laughs> my god but this is from the sociopath that feels nothing I, well, no, what if you start i burping? feel everything <laughs> so intensely but then i can just move on like very very fast high peaks oh. low valleys high peaks low valleys no like no um, middle ground no no, middle people, ground. no one can keep up with it either I, I can see that he's a little he's a little mouse boy that you can't little catch no, little You're mouse a little boy. i'm a fucking mountain lion oh. uh, mouse boy <laughs> i'm not skittish <laughs> i'm yiddish <laughs> now <laughs> gelsa voice to die is a die uh all right uh did, you, did we get this guy name one last guy name. Who is oh we called uh, Fantasia. Oh, yeah. Fantasia. Fantasia. Great Around <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Daddy's talking. <laughs> Sorry for calling myself dad. Jeez. Uncle's talking. Uh <laughs> Fantasia. Wait, what's your nickname Aunt Amir? Yeah, Aunt Amir. <laughs> Uncle Jake and Aunt Amir. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. You oh, get that. I get it. I love right. it. All right, lastly. Uh, around five or six years ago, I had to make a presentation for school in my English lesson about pets I had at home. Nearly everyone in the class had some sort of animal, and I didn't, so I decided to fabricate two cats of my own called Tila and Cheddars with a Z. 
Using a variety of stock photos and images from Google, I convinced my entire class that I did, in fact, have two cats, and even improvised a few risque stories about the antics which they supposedly got into. Risque. <laughs> One time, Tilo <laughs> fucked Cheddar's. With a Z. Cheddar, yeah, she fucked him with a Z. Uh, a few years later, I became really close with one of the girls in my class, and we formed a strong, platonic relationship with her. I had totally forgotten about the presentation I made those years ago, and she brought it up one day, and we were seeing a movie together. In hindsight, I should have just told her that I made it up at that moment, but I didn't, and now the two cats she believes I own are embedded into the friendship. I am afraid that if I tell her I made up the cat's existence and subsequently lied to her about them for three years, she'll be really upset and the friendship will become awkward and she'll refuse to speak to me. Should I tell her that Tila and Cheddars don't exist, <laughs> possibly causing awkward repercussions? Or should I literally seize the cheddar cheese and stick with the lie? Please help. Love. Fantasia. Fantasia Barino. Fantasia Barino. Greatest Burino. singer of our time. Oh, uh, Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Greatest singer of our time won American Idol season something. Season something, Cheddar's and Tila. Yeah, this happens a lot to me where I'm like, I'll just brush un- brush something away under the rug, and it's easier to lie about it or not mention it. And then like it grows and grows and grows, and then I'm like, shit, now I have to have like this weird conversation where I didn't really do this, <laughs> and I had to say that. It's much better to just be 100% open at first about things rather than letting things snowball out of control. Right. Thank you. Step off your high horse. She's three years down the line. What do we do now? In the future, she won't lie. He. 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 Is it he? It's a he. It's really read like a female. Uh, one wow. thing you can do is I uh, 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 test the waters. Tell her Cheddar's wasn't real. But then that, that will make it worse. No. I think I'll go all or nothing. She <laughs> went full crazy by like getting Google image. I mean, this is, is the most hilarious like... problem that someone has. <laughs> and so if you tell this girl, like, I'm sorry, I freaked out so much. I made up two cats with the dumbest names for cats. <laughs> my my cheddar's with a Z. My Tila. Do you have a cat? <laughs> no, I have a dog. I don't like cats very much. Wait, nice. is your, what kind of dog do you have? Um, she's like a mutt. She's got a little boxer face, but she's kind of squatty like an English Okay, bulldog. you're holding up a picture of a cat. You have a cat. <laughs> no, I cannot believe you're lying to me. <laughs> this is a dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah look, ears. it's tricky. Oh, no, yeah, listen to that. Out of a saucer. Yeah. A milk saucer. This Does your dog have a really dope name? Goose. Oh, yeah. oh no, I'm thinking of someone else. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 what do you I say? I feel like he come clean and like that's something to laugh at how ridiculous that is and that you held that in for three years like that's the dumbest like that doesn't change anyone's life but the problem is he's been lying since then he he he's been doing current lies so it's not about it's one thing to lie to the class during the presentation but then the friend was like oh yeah you got those two cats tila and cheddars and he's like you know it that's correct (laughs) and then like who knows? Maybe he's even like been telling stories about them. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Hey, man, what's up? Uh, Tila <laughs> was sick last night. So. I actually have another risque story about the antics they supposedly <laughs> this got. This friend into. loves it. Tell me more. Why did you say Tell me more, Fantasia. <laughs> Tell me another t- Tila and Cheddar's tale. But is this, this is just a friend. This isn't like romantic interest. That's what he says. It says the platonic. Platonic, and he says the stories. I feel like it's not platonic. That's why he had to put platonic in there. And that's why he's so worried. <gasps> Do you have any male friends, or is it? Is that impossible? No, impossible. Improbable. <laughs> Impossible. No, I have a lot of guy friends, but this sounds like the issue is, I think a friend would laugh at that. Yeah. If it's a romantic interest, then it's like, that has grounds for weirdness because you're like, what else could you uh, lie about? Oh, yeah. Friends lie and laugh. Yeah, I lie to my friends constantly and then but, come clean and we laugh and laugh <laughs> but the significant- night away. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time you lied to me and we stared at each other for four minutes. <laughs> Wow. I laughed and you cried. <laughs> and we cried the night away. Uh, that's my favorite song. <laughs> is there a Laugh the Night Away? <laughs> Laugh the Night Away. It's the is, kids' bop version. <laughs> is there a world where he gets the cats? <gasps> that, but then you got at some point, that's going to burn a hole in his <gasps> little heart that this is a burden. Like three years. <laughs> That's got to be... Right, then he has to lie about the age of the cat. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, your Google images that you used in your presentation don't oh, look yeah, like yeah, these Yeah, cats. he's starting to like Photoshop gray hair. What is this the photo cat? of uh, Tila on her first birthday? This is from last year. <laughs> yeah. Look, I know I that Tila is six. In the background, I see a Durant Warriors jersey. You're telling me that this is from Tila's third party? <laughs> How could you have possibly... She's a mere kitten here. <laughs> She's a mere cat, which is a pretty good name for a cat. 
And oh, also, which is if they've also... been friends for three years, has she never been over to his house at all? <laughs> That's right. Well, I think because she's allergic recently... to cats. She's like, <laughs> yeah. He recently became friends with her. They've just oh, the story oh. happens three, three years ago. Uh, if there's st- if there's still time, if it's not three, if there's still time. I don't know. Lie. I, I, I always keep say it. Lie. Just keep lying. Keep lying. Keep lying. <laughs> lie and burn oh, yeah. bridges. Lie and burn bridges. <laughs> so we got one for truth, one for lie. I'm the tie breaking vote. Okay. What would I do? I would probably continue to lie. It's easier to lie. It's Is easier it? to lie. That's why people do it. Oh, okay. you know, I guess it's what would I do? I, I would. <laughs> if it was, if it was, what would I do? I would probably would have told the truth. Oh, wow, that's really nice, dude. Thanks. Because wow. I think it's silly enough. I tell I tell lies about real shit. This is but this is it's pretty so silly. Like it's so. If my friend told me that their dog they made up three years yeah. ago was fake, I'd be like, "You let we gotta work on some of your shit." Like, this is, that's this what is you like, want to avoid by to, telling the truth. No, that's but this why. is so. I mean, it's like, so. In, this is silly. It's, it's a funny. Sweet lie. It's a. It's a, it's something you definitely laugh about. If he had lied about like you know his. That's okay. Someone is using the restroom. <laughs> oh, I think I just had rain sticks in your wall. <laughs> oh, if we you have listen sound to effects. that, it's the didgeridoo of ending the show. I feel like if he lied about something like lying about his mom dying or something like that, something serious. Yeah, something more serious. Mm-hmm. But this is just he made up two cats and one he gave a Z at the end of the name. So like cheddars with a Z. Cheddars with a Z. Oh, the risque stories. If I could just regale you with them, <laughs> so risque. <laughs> risque also with a Z. One time, Cheddar's had a ball of yarn. Stuck it right into Tila's buttocks. <laughs> it was the most risque thing I'd ever seen a kitten do. <laughs> These felines. But that should have been a red flag for his class that that kid didn't have cats if he's describing their behavior as risque. <laughs> what a weird assignment. a PowerPoint presentation. I know, that my... too. What teachers Everyone like... do a lesson about your pets. And we and... all have them, right? <laughs> no what about excuses. you, Fantasia? <laughs> I have two cats. <laughs> Cheddar? With a Z? Cheddars? With a Z? And just scanning the room looking for names. And he just sees crackers. <laughs> and Tila Tequila poster. Oh, yeah. That's uh, the, another the weird classroom. thing about this class. Is the Tila Tequila, tequila poster. They're everywhere. They're everywhere in this classroom. Uh, all right. Cool. Teacher's a fan. Uh, that's what we would do. Uh, thanks for coming on the program, Grace. Thanks for having me. I'm glad we finally got you. Yeah, this was uh, fun. Uh, is there anything you would like to promote Dirty now that 30. you're here? Dirty30movie.com? Yeah, Dirty30movie.com. Go check it out. Go download it. It's fun. It's not terrible. That's a pretty ringing Huge. endorsement. Yeah. For a movie? Most yeah. movies right? are. Most yeah. movies are bad. It's not bad. All right. <laughs> Solid, not bad. <laughs> I'll see it. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm in. <laughs> Uh, and if you have your own questions or theme song submissions, that email for every single thing is if I were you show at gmail.com. The opening theme song was from the Super Marcato Brothers, and this last one is kind of interesting. Oh, you I'll, have an end song. Yeah, we have too many to use. We gotta we gotta use two at a time. It says Martin, this is a theme song submission set to the tune of a folk version of the Swedish national anthem. Wow. Have you ever been to Sweden? No, I've been to Finland. Well, you could have gone to Sweden. Instead, you're in fucking (laughs) Reno, Nevada with a week. In a week. (laughs) For a week. I'll learn my prepositions after this. Uh, Thanks so much for listening, you guys. We'll be back next week. Bye. Peace. Now you have to say bye in a cool way. Goodbye. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, two slimy Jews in a room all alone. They're making their money off a podcast. This Jewish ass clowns are called Jake and Shmuel. They have a podcast called If I Were Jew. They have a podcast called If I Were Jew. Fucking Jews. Oh, hey, me again. Uh, if you're still listening to this episode, that means you have a thirst for a podcast that may or may not be able to be quenched. Uh, but I wanted to mention a few new uh, shows on the HeadGum Network, uh, just in case you needed more, a little bit more of me and Jake in your lives. Um, the first one's called All Fantasy Everything. It's a really funny comedian named Ian Carmel, and he drafts the world. It's like a fantasy draft, but not for sports. Uh, Jake and I were on his second episode about sandwiches. It's me, Jake, Ian, drafting our favorite sandwiches. At the end, we have a team of five sandwiches, and you guys get to decide who did it best. We had a really, really, really fun time talking about sandwiches for an hour and a half. Uh, So if you want more of us, 
uh, I recommend listening to All Fantasy Everything and start with that sandwich episode. Uh, another podcast on HeadGum, another new podcast, I should say, is um, I'm Still Right, uh, which is a podcast in which Luke Kelly Klein, another really funny friend of ours, uh, has friends or old lovers on talking about their biggest fight and discussing who is still right. Jake and I were on the first episode of that. Uh, it's called The Podfather Punch. Uh, and if you like what you hear, you can hear more episodes. I think they're up to three at this point. Uh, I'm still right. We have a show called uh, Black Girl Nerds, which is uh, an old existing show that we incorporated into HeadGum. And it's an online community devoted to promoting nerdiness amongst black women and people of color. So if that sounds like something that's right up your alley, there's 90 episodes of Black Girl Nerds uh, right now, all available. And you can check it out, as always, uh, on headgum.com. What else do we got? Oh, Jake was on High and Mighty this week talking about porn, which was pretty amazing. If you've never heard Jake talk about porn, uh you you never heard about a fan passionately discuss one of his greatest strengths before, so I recommend listening to that one. It's High and Mighty, appropriately, episode 69, Porn, with uh, Jake Hurwitz and Bob Kestrone. A uh, lot of funny shows on the HG network, but those are a few that we're highlighting this week in case, you don't know, you're still bored, you're still on a commute, you still want more. Oh, here's another one I should mention. Uh, Best of the Worst, uh, a, new, a new podcast with Jamie Lee, who's a really funny stand-up comedian. We're very happy to have her show on our network. Uh, it's her and sometimes her husband talking about the worst X, Y, or Z of people's lives. She has an episode about the worst date, uh, an episode about the worst celebrity encounters, the worst relationships. If it's the worst something, Jamie Lee will talk about it. All right, that's our little, uh, that's my spiel. I'm out. I'm done. We'll be back next week. As always, ta-da for listening. Goodbye, everybody. That was a HeadGum Podcast.